Hello everyone. It's uh, great to see such a great crowd here at, uh, here at Fina Vista and uh, I'm very happy to be speaking with you today. Uh, I'm Bill Salufo, uh, partner at QED Investors. Uh, we are an international uh, fintech specialist venture capital firm uh, operating out of the US, the UK, and Latin America. Um, you know, we have 11 investments uh, here in Latin America, four of which are in Mexico, the first of which was, uh, was Confio. Um, so we're very excited to share the stage with Confio. Uh, and one thing that makes QED a little unique is we have a dedicated fund uh, for Latin American investing uh, with which we've partnered with Scotiabank. And so also very happy to share the stage with, uh, with our friends at Scotiabank. Um, you know, we believe very heavily in the topic of bank fintech collaboration. Uh, and we think in the long run, uh, it's going to be, you know, pretty common and, and best for many fintechs to really think about partnering with banks uh, and many banks to think about how do they, how do they partner with fintechs. Um, and so I'll, I'll let th these two introduce themselves in a minute, but we wanted to, to spend half an hour really discussing the, the topic of bank and fintech uh, collaboration, talking about one specific example of that, but then also uh, potentially generalizing it. So, Tade, you want to introduce sure. yourself? Thank you, Bill. Uh, my name is Taido Larte. Um, I'm in transition, actually. I've been working for the last two years um, leading investment and partnership with the fintech ecosystem in LATAM, working very closely with, uh, with Bill and QED investors, and now I'm moving into a new role here in Mexico leading digital transformation in Scotiabank. So happy to be here today, David. Hi, I'm um, also very excited to be here next to Taida and Bill. Uh, I'll introduce myself. Quick background, I'm from the northern part of Mexico, uh, grew up in Mexico, Brazil, the US, uh, and spent my college years in Boston, uh, and then spent some years in the banking world, and after that uh, founded Confio. Uh, we are firing the growth of small businesses in Mexico. We're an online uh, lending platform which uh, started lending at the beginning of 2014, and we've uh, had a really good traction and now have amazing partners. That's great. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I, I think one of the reasons we're, we're all here together is, uh, you know, we've been working collaboratively on one example of a partnership, and so, you know, just figured we'd start the panel by talking a little bit about that. So, David, I wonder if you can just take a minute and describe a little bit about what, uh, you know, what, you, what we've all been working on together. Yeah, sure. So, the nature of the, of the relationship that we have uh, with Scotia is that we've started a, a pilot, um, and the pilot, in a nutshell, uh, what it is, is uh, an asset purchase program um, along with, uh, with a servicing agreement as well. And uh, to put that in other words, we're basically running our entire uh, platform and, and same business model, uh, but Scotia's helping us fund those loans. And we, we started out with a small pilot. We're kind of building uh, the necessary steps to to make that into something larger, but that's the general idea of the relationship that we have. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I would just add that one of the things that we've seen in multiple geographies and, and across a number of things is that there are a number of ways of, of funding a portfolio. I mean, there are peer-to-peer lending, uh, there's bank partnerships, there's you know working with uh, you know the debt capital markets to fund it on balance sheet, and there's no right or wrong answer. Um, and at various stages of, of a company's life, you know, different funding strategies have, have pros and cons. It's one of our observations, though, that as companies become large um, and as, you know, markets become more competitive, you know, deposits tend to be the most, you know, cost-effective and, and stable funding source. And so, for, you know, from my perspective, one of the benefits of, of thinking of partnering with banks earlier rather than later, you know, is the ability to, uh, you know, to tap into, you know, strong deposit bases. Uh, you know, as ways of, uh, of funding portfolios. Uh, one of our U.S. companies, Green Sky, uh, that just went public, um, you know, was built exclusively on that funding model. Um, so, uh, you know, that's one reason why we think this, this concept's pretty interesting. Um, you know, let me go to Tide for a minute. What, uh, why is this exciting from Scotiabank's point of view, and why is Scotiabank interested in a, a partnership with Confio? Um, I mean, as part of the whole digital transformation that we have been doing during the last three, four years, it, it's clear for us and we have to be very humble recognizing that we don't know what we don't know. And we have to partner with those who has the, you know, the skills, the capabilities that we don't have, the, the, the part of the 
whole cultural change that we need to encounter as part of the as part of the transformation in the bank. So for us, it was clear that partnering with Confio in this case for us will move the dial in terms of how we can digitally adjudicate loans to small and medium companies, which is a strategic segment for us in Scotia, in, in, in Scotia and Mexico, not only in Mexico, but in, in other markets. So as part of the whole, I would say, open innovation strategy that we have in the bank, it's clear for us that we have to replicate this type of partnerships, but I would like to add that this pilot is just the beginning of that future partnership, right? So it is clear that for both companies, we need to understand each other. We need to learn a lot before, you know, moving in a in a scale, more scale um, way of working with them. So um, it's business. Oh, that's great. And David, similar question. I mean, what what caused you to be interested in uh, in pursuing this this partnership? Yeah, so I, I actually think that, I mean, from a strategic point of view, the reason why we thought this was exciting and we went through the whole process, uh, which wasn't uh, very fast, but <laughs> it, it was definitely worth it. Uh, I'd just like to highlight kind of what I consider are the strengths that we have and the strengths that the banks have, or in, in this case, Scotia. Uh, but for us, I think we've uh, developed a model that has helped us get into a segment uh, that historically has been super underserved, right? So we uh, offer unsecured small business loans in ranges where uh, you mostly see portfolios in the, in the personal loan segment. Uh, and we found a way of doing it really great with data. Uh, and obviously, uh, one of the things that uh, attracted us and, and had us kind of go through this process and, and find a great partner was that uh, in the case of Scotia, they have uh, very good attributes, right? One of them, uh, Bill mentioned, so uh, deposits is uh, by far the most efficient way once you're at large scale to fund a, a portfolio. Uh, so that was uh, thing number one. Two, they have a lot of uh, regulatory robustness. So I, I think, I mean, from our point of view, we said, look, if we want to keep growing, we have to eventually move a little bit closer towards uh, higher and more regulation and I think having a, a partner like Scotia is a great way of learning in that uh, framework and we've uh, we've accomplished that um, so far and the last thing that I add is that they also have a, a large uh, client base already right which creates like a, a natural positive selection so for all these reasons I think it makes total sense for these types of partnerships to to happen um, it's important to, to test them and to uh, do it gradually, but it's, um, that, that's basically the reasoning and the strategy behind our decision. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, you know, I guess if I can ask, uh, and I'll go back to Tida here, I mean, we're, I think as we've mentioned, we're sort of in pilot mode, you know, trying to get to know each other and, and make sure it's going to be a good match. I mean, any comments so far on how it's going and, you know, are you, uh, are you kind of pleased and, and sort of as encouraged now as, as you were then or any, any learning so far? Absolutely, I mean, 100%. I think that the first thing is learnings. I mean, the steering committee that we created, learnings from re-steaming re in the bank, marketing people in the bank, even the digital factory, sharing, sharing best practices has been great. Uh, to leverage what you have been building during the last years and that, I mean, this, that particular adjudication model that you have, a lot of learnings for all, for all, in, for all of us in the bank. And I would say that the, the key piece is having both cultures being combined. I mean, being in meetings when you have 50 people from Scotiabank, five people from, from <laughs> Confio, and dealing, I mean, and, and, and um, that's, a, that's a huge learning. I mean, having a lawyer from the bank, regulatory people, having people from operations, technology, dealing with Confio, it's a, it was a whole journey that I would say, even though it took, it took long, uh, but for both sides has been uh, an amazing, an amazing journey. So I would say, looking forward, we are, I mean, open to keep working together and see how we can scale this. Yeah. Any comments on that similar topic? Yeah, no, I, I think for us, um, the initial expectation of what a pilot means is uh, typically something that you can do quickly and <laughs> that all of a sudden became something a lot uh, more robust and, and lengthy, but 
uh, now that we've kind of gone through the whole process, I think we're, we're happy with the fact that we, that we went through it. Uh, there were some initial um, things that happened, like Taida mentioned. So the first time they came to our office, I think we didn't have enough chairs for their entire team. <laughs> so they, half of them had to go back and just dial in. Um, so that was, uh, so there, you know, small things like that, but you end up learning how to work through these. And I think it's important to start early. Uh, and now that we've kind of gone through everything, we actually, you know, we, we kind of sit back and we're like, hey, we're doing things a lot better than we were, uh, call it, a year ago. Uh, things are a lot more buttoned up. We have at least uh, knowledge of how to do things in a, in a much more disciplined fashion, and that ends up happening, right? So at first you're going like at full speed, uh, trying to uh, just do things with as little friction as possible, but eventually you need to start adding these, um, these little steps of discipline. Um, and, and it's been really helpful um, having a partner like Scotia to, to get us there. And, and, and these cultural topics that, that both uh, of them talked about are, I mean, they're challenging, right? Because it's hard, you know, you're not going to find a, uh, you know, a strategy presentation sort of talking about and teaching you sort of how to deal with these cultural differences. Um, and and it, is, it is pretty amazing. I mean, um, you know, I spent 20 years of my career at Capital One, um, and so I certainly get sort of how, uh, how banks operate. Um, and I've now spent the last, you know, four or so years in the fintech ecosystem and, uh, and, and, and amazed and impressed at how quickly things can move and how quickly you can make decisions. Um, and so the cultures of, of, and again, I think we've got Confio and Scotia as examples, um, but I think they are very typical examples, right? So I think, you know, most of the case when we found fintechs and banks trying to work together, you know, the first obstacle is cultural. Um, and I think you're, you know, laughing a little bit about the 50 on 5, you know, ratio. I think that's super common. Um, and I think, uh, you know, you find fintechs that literally only have 12 people in the entire company. Um, and, uh, and you get, you know, three people from each of 12 departments coming from a large institution. It can, uh, it can be overwhelming. Um, but at the same time, I think there's good learnings to be had on, on both sides. I mean, I think, um, you know, banks forte typically isn't moving really fast. And I think they can learn a lot by how the fintechs move. I also think it's great learnings for the fintechs as they get large and as they become more regulated. You know, banks don't do these things because they're stupid ideas. Um, they all come from, you know, what the regulatory environment is, sort of, you know, sometime in the past when they've gotten sued and made mistakes or, you know, whatever it is. And so there's great, you know, I think learning opportunity um, that, uh, you know, there's, there's kind of informal skill, uh, skill transfer uh, as well. So let me, move, let me continue on this thrust of what's been hard. Um, you know, we've talked about kind of why we've done it and, and why we're excited about it, but, you know, this isn't easy. So we talked a little bit about this first cultural impression, but, but David, I wonder if you can comment on what else has been hard? What's been a kind of challenge of making the early stages of this work? And, and can you share sort of, you know, anything that you've learned in terms of overcoming that that's been useful? Yeah, I think uh, for us it's been a challenge, at least initially, to kind of assign uh, resources to the project. Uh, because when you, you know, the first part of it is great, because you really are, if you can combine the best out of uh, a fintech model and the best out of a, a bank, I mean, you get the best of both worlds, right? And it sounds great on paper. Uh, the initial conversations are amazing. And then when you actually have to implement, uh, you, I mean, it, you have to get everyone involved, right? So you have several people from each department. And sometimes it's, you know, all of these uh, people um, reaching out to different people ca across the organization. So kind of from our end, um, how we can, one, kind of set expectations, and two, just manage the, the resources and the time that we uh, dedicate. Because we obviously know in the long run it's very, uh, it's definitely worth it, uh, huge value creation. But at the same time, uh, it can lead to some distraction, or in some cases, uh, a lot more, depending on uh, what the stage of the, of the business is. Uh, but for us, it was learning how to deal with that uh, initially. And Daida was actually amazing throughout the process. She really helped kind of catalyze that. So kind of finding the right uh, people was key uh, during uh, this and, and having strong backers, right? Because especially when decisions are made um, throughout, like cross area, sometimes uh, cross border, it can lead to additional challenges. But 
Yeah. I'd say that that was, that's kind of the summary. Yeah, I mean, just to pick on, on one thing you said, I think it's a good generalizable insight. If you are on the bank side, I mean, we have found, um, you know, not that we've done, you know, 50 of these, these pilots, but through a handful that we've, we've worked in, I think we found that someone who is playing Ty Day's role is incredibly important uh, in making these things work. Um, you know, banks tend to, as they get large, become more and more siloed. Um, an international bank like Scotia is yet another level of complexity where there's a local team, an international team, et cetera. Having a clear champion and a clear person that's pushing across all of these different functions yeah. to make something happen, I think, is really, really important. Um, and in, in these partnership ideas where we found that the bank um, is able to identify somebody to, to play that role and play it well, it's, it's made a huge difference. Whereas in a couple cases, that hasn't been the case. And, you know, I f you may have experienced this too. It's found very difficult to navigate a bank from, from outside the bank. It's probably difficult to navigate a bank from within a bank, but um, I think that's a, a big differentiating factor. Um, Tade, from your end, what, any particular challenge you would, uh, you would highlight? I would say, I mean, the, the, to create that empathy across the bank, but is that empathy, and I would say appetite to fail, that sometimes you have to fail, 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 fix, 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 until you get what you need, is not easy. It's not easy as part of um, a bank organization. So uh, how to move, how to move that, that discipline and appetite to test with small companies that it might fail, it might be, I mean, the probability of success might be, I don't know, 5%, 5%, uh, 5% 1%, but we are gonna learn from that and then you can keep pivoting and everything. So that level, that discipline and uh, methodology, and I would say culture, I would say was the most challenging piece for me. And, uh, and the other part is deal with those differences, right? You have a local team, but then you have Canada on the other side and, and moving, even so you have the bank with a clear top uh, down strategy and creating a specific team to work with fintechs, to connect, to work, to act as a bridge is, is sometimes it's not easy to manage both agendas, right? Mexico agenda, Canada agenda. So I would say having this role filled and uh, <laughs> keep working and pushing for this is going to be key in the future. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. Um, and, and just pulling up from, from some of the specifics, I guess, you know, I'll start with David. Um, any general learnings that, that you've got that you might share as, as you know, and again, we've talked about one particular type of bank fintech partnership. I mean, there are many, many types of partnerships that could be out there. Um, you know, any, any particular advice to, uh, to folks as they consider? Yeah, I, I mean, two things come to mind. One is, I mean, we've gotten through uh, a few of these uh, processes already, uh, but the, the most important thing is to, and Taider kind of mentioned this, but there has to be a, a clear champion and it has to be a top-down strategy because a lot of times we've seen other uh, organizations that have, you know, their segregated uh, innovation hub or whatever, but if that vision doesn't connect with the, the actual business, it's really hard to get stuff done. So finding out kind of what that connection is really early on is, is important to see how much time and, and effort uh, one uh, invest in that relationship is key. Uh, and that's why, you know, uh, Scotia has been great in that sense. And the second thing is to start early because it always takes longer than, than expected, right? Uh, so those are probably the two uh, top things that uh, I can think of and that I would definitely consider when trying to implement a partnership. Right. Tade, what advice do you have for keep folks? It, keep it simple. Keep it simple, start testing one thing make sure that you have the results and track the results that you want to have. And then, you know, it's, it's more what you said before, is managing expectations, but keep it simple. What we want to demonstrate is that this cooperative model works for the bank. It's not to see a bottom line the next quarter. Is that we are building perhaps a new revenue stream for the bank for the next three years. So it's patience, simple, and, uh, and humble. Keep humble That's great. in the bank. No, thank you. And, and I guess I would uh, close with just one set of thoughts. I mean, we, this is hard. I think you've gotten that. I think um, you know, you've heard from, from both of them how they believe in the opportunity for their particular uh, partnership they're pursuing. 
We just believe very firmly in the long run that banks will be more successful if they can tap into the things that fintechs do great. You know, innovation, speed, technology, great user experiences. Um, I mean, these are things that I think it's beneficial to start from scratch and build all this stuff that's, that's purpose built. Um, and I think fintechs have a huge advantage in those things relative to banks. But as David highlighted before, you know, there's a number of places where banks have huge advantages. You know, deposits, large customer base, regulatory, you know, infrastructure and, uh, and apparatus, you know, potentially brands, um, and a number of things going for them. And, and you know, we just believe heavily that the ecosystem and the, the consumer experiences will be much better in the long run if we can find ways of doing these. And you know, some of the early pioneers will hit some snags. Um, hopefully, we can all learn from it. And it'll be easier uh, for everybody as time goes along. Um, but uh, you know, I think continuing to, uh, to pursue these is, is good. And in theory, we've got nine minutes left according to my clock, but I know we stand between you and lunch, so we, uh, we won't prolong this anymore. And uh, thank you very much for the time. <laughs>